Welcome to Game Genie Uncorked, a video series dedicated to explaining and modifying Game Genie codes. Today's featured game is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. The code manual provides us with quite a few codes to use for this game. They center around extra lives, time manipulation, damage mitigation, power-up control for both Mario and Yoshi, and finally, jumping. Three codes are provided that alter how high Mario can jump. They are defined as Low Jump, Super Jump, and Mega Jump. Each Game Genie code changes a single value in our game code. The first two characters represent the value we want to use for our change. Game Genie codes are scrambled. They do not directly represent which locations and values we are changing in the ROM. However, we do know how to unscramble them. Therefore, our D0, D4, and DF can be decoded to the values they actually represent. Those values are 4, 2, and 1, respectively. If 4 indicates a low jump and is therefore less than the normal jump, and 2 and 1 are higher jumps than usual, it is reasonable to assume the unmodified jump value in this case is 3. The remainder of each Game Genie code provides the location in the ROM that contains the default jump value we change, and we find a value of 3 in that location as expected. These values are rather interesting. Wouldn't you assume they would be more complex than a very simple 1, 2, 3, and 4? How do these very small numbers modify how high Mario can jump? Here is a basic overview of how jumping works in Super Mario World. Mario's Y position in our example is 352. When we jump, the number decreases as we move upward and increases as we move downward. This is important. The application of a negative number to Y position means we are going up, while positive numbers mean we are going down. That brings us to gravity. While resting on the ground and not pressing any buttons, gravity has a value of 6. Mario is on the ground and the player is not trying to jump, therefore Mario's current Y speed is 6, which is basically gravity. We've seen a gravity value of 3 as well as 1, 2, and 4 when it comes to jumping. Now we have a value of 6 when resting. Why? What is gravity in this case? By design, Super Mario World's physics for Mario work in units of 1 16th of a pixel. Therefore, Mario is currently traveling downward, thanks to gravity, at 6 times 1 16th of a pixel per frame. In other words, 0.375 pixels per frame. In fact, there is a fixed point value in RAM for pixel fractions, or subpixels if you will, for Mario's Y position that has this 0.375 pixels applied to it each frame. If we slow down execution, you can see that the value increases by that amount with each frame. When the decimal rolls up high enough to roll Mario's Y position integer to 353 pixels, which would put him in the ground, the game logic ejects him from the tile below before it happens. It says, no, don't increase to 353 pixels, stay at 352, because Mario is already on the ground. Some of you may wonder why this pixel fraction is constantly being increased and Mario's position compensated as the game is running. And the reason is because, just like in real life, physics don't stop when you stop. And now we've arrived at the moment Mario jumps. Let's press and hold the B button to see what happens. Gravity is changed to 3, the default jumping gravity. And of course we know this is 1 16th times 3, or 0.1875 pixels per frame. Mario is assigned a Y speed of minus 80 giving us an upward velocity at the start of the jump, and that gravity constant is immediately applied to it to get minus 77, because gravity. So our takeoff velocity is 1 16th of a pixel times negative 77. That gives us negative 4.8125 pixels per frame. We can predict Mario's next Y position by applying this value to his current Y position. If we let the game roll forward one frame, there it is. You'll also notice that our gravity value of 3 has once again been applied to Y speed, and minus 77 has increased by 3 to a value of minus 74. This reduces our upward velocity for the next calculation, because gravity. As Mario continues upward, gravity slows him down until finally his speed rolls positive. Gravity wins as always, and he is pushed back down toward the ground. Take note that the maximum downward velocity, or terminal velocity, is 4.1875. 52 frames from takeoff to landing. The game runs at 60 frames per second, so Mario's jumping journey takes just under one second.
Now here is where things get a little interesting. The gravity constant changes depending on if you are pressing a jump button or not. With the game running in slow motion, let's jump again. The jump begins as usual, but letting go of the B button immediately changes the gravity back to 6. The player alters the physics of the jump by either pressing or not pressing the B button. When the B button is not pressed, gravity is stronger, and Mario arrives on the ground after a shorter period of time. This can be used to make shorter jumps or to simply fall faster. In fact, we can fall from a high place and observe that we take longer to reach the ground if holding a jump button versus not holding the jump button. Players can press the button, release it, and press it again as many times as they can, and the gravity constant will still be altered throughout the same jump. Gravity manipulation also applies to the spin jump. B and A are both checked when it comes to which gravity constant you use, regardless of which jump type you selected for takeoff. Therefore, you can press A and immediately roll to B and still get the maximum jump height. The same holds true for a normal jump with B and then rolling to A, 52 frames. With that crash course in Mario World jumping from a standstill out of the way, let's return to the Game Genie. We'll apply the Super Jump Game Genie code that changes our jump gravity constant from 3 to 2. Gravity with no button pressed is still 6, however when I press jump, gravity is now 2, and therefore lets us reach a higher peak for our jump. The button press logic still applies as usual, and letting go of the B button returns our gravity constant to 6. If we switch to the mega jump, gravity drops to 1. We can jump really high now and are in the air for 160 frames, 2 and 2 thirds seconds. The low jump increases the gravity constant to 4, and we are pushed back down to the ground a lot faster than usual. We can easily make up a couple of new codes here. This code will increase jumping gravity to 5. This puts us back on the ground in half a second. We could also change gravity to 0, which means our upward velocity remains constant as long as we hold down the jump button. Fortunately, Mario's Y position is stopped from proceeding too far out of bounds. Releasing the jump button and pressing it again rapidly lets us use that gravity value of 6 to lower our upward velocity. Naturally, it stops once we press the button again to change gravity back to 0. If we continue to do this, we can switch upward velocity to downward velocity but prevent acceleration due to gravity by continuing to hold the jump button after downward velocity is achieved. Mario floats gently toward the ground at a constant speed. Well, now you understand what those Game Genie codes do to alter how you can jump in Super Mario World. We didn't jump while running or using the cape power-up. We kept it simple. If you would like to see more Mario game manipulation, check out the Behind the Code series here on Displaced Gamers. That's it for this episode of Game Genie Uncorked. Let me know what other Game Genie codes you would like explained, and I'll catch you next time.